Great to see you here again. Like I promised, in this new session, we will start with describing a maximization problem that we will develop in the two following videos. And in this first video, we will look at identifying the different constraints and the objective function, starting from the description of the problem. And the description of the problem itself. So typically you get a description like this. Consider a factory in which we are producing two types of bicycles, fancy and sporty. In order to produce the bicycles, we have two types of processes. Process one is the preparation of the separate parts and process two is the assembly of the bicycle. Team one works on process one as a capacity of 1440 hours and team two has a capacity of 600 hours and they work of course on process two. Process one takes six hours for a fancy and 4.5 hours for a sporty. Process two takes three hours for a fancy and 1.5 hours for a sporty. We do not want to have more than 300 sporty bikes and 175 fancy bikes in stock and the profit on a sporty is 100 and on a fancy it's 165 determine the optimal mix. So first we have to look at the problem itself. We have to see what are the elements, what are the constraints that we have. So we find here process one, and for process one, the team has 1,440 hours available. Process two, 600 hours available. And for process one, we know that it takes six hours for a fancy and 4.5 hours for a sporty. For process two, we know that it's 300 hours for a fancy and 1.5 hours for a sporty. And we also have the constraint that we cannot have more than 300 sporty or 175 fancy bikes. So these are the elements we will use to make the constraints. In second element, we have to look at the objective function. And here we look at the profit because we have a maximization problem. So the profit is basically the most important element and the profit on a sport is 100 and on the fancy is 165. So based on this, we can start writing the constraint. In order to do that, it's very interesting to have a table and we want to find those constraints in an easy way and a logical approach is to put a matrix here where we have all the different elements. For example, we have the types of bicycles, the sporty and the fancy. We have the variable or the variables. We have the processes and the maximum elements. So we have all the elements together. So for the sporty, we know that we need 4.5 hours for process one and 1.5 hours for process two. For the fancy, it's a six and three. We know that process one is limited to 1,440 hours and process two up to 600. Sporty has to be limited to 300 and fancy to 175. So based on this information, we can express the constraints and we can calculate the time to uh, continue process one by looking at the time it, we need for one sporty and for one fancy. We can do the same for process two. And then we uh, can add there the maximization or the maximum constraints that we also have added. So let's have a look at writing the constraints. So we have the same table. We find them here and we look first at process one. So what we can say basically when we look at process one, the time to complete process one is four times, 4.5 times the number of sporty bikes I'm going to assemble, plus six times the number of fancy bikes I'm going to assemble. And this has to be limited to 1,440, which gives us the uh, equation 4.5x plus 6y has to be smaller than or equal to 1,440. We can now do the same for process two. We will keep the previous equation and we can say that for process two, we can write the constraint as 1.5x plus 3y is smaller than or equal to 600. The next element is to look at the limitation on the sporty bike. So we can say that X has to be smaller or equal than 300. And for the fancy bike, we can do the same thing, but here we have 
y smaller or equal than 175. And basically, these are the equations that we can deduct, all the constraints that we can deduct from the description of the problem. So we basically have four constraints. Now, remember that when we have a linear programming problem, we also have to add the non-negativity condition. And the non-negativity conditions are given by the fact that x and y have to be larger than or equal to zero. Basically, the next thing to do is to complete the objective function. We find it from the data related to the profit, and we can say that 100x plus 165y has to be maximum. The next what we have to do when we have all that information is in fact the creation of the graph. We have to put all those equations on the x and y graph. Remember that we cannot draw inequalities. We have to put there the equations of the line. So we have to find the points, the intersection points with x and y, then draw the line, then determine the feasibility zone. So for each of those equations, we have to determine which side of the line complies with the constraints. And finally, we will find the feasibility zone. Then we have to draw the objective function. We can draw it by using the equation with the um, slope. And we can find, in fact, by moving the objective function farther away from the origin up to the last point of the feasibility zone. And that gives us the optimal solution. Another way to do it, to find the optimal solution, is to calculate the objective function in the different corner points and identify the point with the highest profit. Basically, this was the first step in resolving a maximization problem. In the next video, we are going to construct the graph and identify the feasibility zone. That will be used later to find the optimal solution. So this was it for this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you and bye-bye.